Hi, Hi, we're the Boulevards. I'm Peniette. I'm Izzy. And today we wanted to share with you guys um, of how we saved $60,000 in two years. So why are we doing this video? Firstly, we wanted to create more conversation with young Pacific Islanders like ourselves about building wealth and um, fostering healthy financial education environments for young people like ourselves. Secondly, we wanted to do this uh, because we wanted to talk about the benefits of financial independence. I'll be talking a little bit about that later on. Before we move on, I just wanted to do a disclaimer that we are not professional financial advisors. Also in this video, we are not claiming that we are at the finish line of where we want to be. Um, we are simply sharing our journey with you and uh, hoping that some of the things that we've picked up along the way will be beneficial to you. So we saved $60,000 in hard cash in two years. And we are regular people uh, who saved up this amount of money over time and we basically started from scratch, from zero dollars. So how are we doing this? Today we're going to be explaining some of the processes that we took to get us to where we are today. We've narrowed it to about five steps that we've followed over the past two years and we're hoping that by sharing this it will be beneficial to those of you who are tuning in. And basically we are average people um, who started our wealth and building our wealth from zero, from zilch. So step number one, we saved up 50% and sometimes even more of our monthly income. So basically we saved um, and we did this aggressively. We saved aggressively from month to month and would put aside 50% or sometimes even more into our savings account. So normally you would hear that 10 to 20% is a good place to start for savings. Uh, we wanted to raise this a little bit to 50% just because of the goal that we're trying to get to. And we decided that we are trying to get to an early age of retirement. Um, and so this is one of the reasons why we decided to start saving aggressively. And we realized that we would need to make some adjustments and sacrifices to the way we were living, which leads us to step number two, to cut back on big expenses. And this could include um, catching buses over taxis. So we try to catch buses a lot of the times instead of cabs because cab fares, eventually they add up from Monday to Saturday if you're catching taxis every day. And it also, you know, another example of this is to eat in versus eating out. A lot of the times, you know, we get pressured, with, especially when we're with workmates or when we're out with our friends and uh, family, we tend to like, oh, let's go out to the restaurant and eat. But we decided that we needed to cut back on that and just eat at home. Buying groceries was cheaper than eating out. So that was one another thing that we did. And another example was um, finding cheaper options for rent. And, you know, when we did, when we identified that this is another adjustment that we were going to have to make, we just we decided that we couldn't be picky about the kind of apartment that we got, um, and it also included renting out with someone else so that we could split out the rent and not complaining about the conditions in which the flat we were living in was. Step number three that we took was investing our money into something that would help our money to grow as opposed to just staying stagnant. Um, so in this case, we decided to put our money into different financial institutions that would offer good interest rates to help our money to grow as opposed to uh, putting it in a savings account or putting all of our eggs in one basket, uh, which necessarily wouldn't help it to grow. And so, for example, you have financial institutions out here in Fiji like Kontiki, so you can do term deposits with them, and you also have um, Fijian Holdings Unit Trust, which is another institution which in which you can put your money in to help it grow overnight. And so your money is basically working for you rather than sitting in a bank where the interest rates are low. So that's the, that's the approach that we took, was we decided to invest it um, and let it grow faster than it would in a bank. And another reason why we decided to sink our money into these investment accounts was, especially for me being a woman, um, and you know, women love to shop. And when I see that money in that bank account, I just want to spend my money and just swipe that card. But once we sunk it, once we put our money and sunk it into these investment accounts, I couldn't touch it because I was, you know, it was a way to let go of that money and not have it sit in my bank account where I would just swipe. Um, swipe the card and go shopping and then Israel is getting mad at me the next day <laughs> So that's something I had to learn how to do was just to let go of that money and just let it um, And 
put it into these investment accounts instead of spending it because we have that habit of doing that. So step number four is investing in education, particularly financial education. I can say that this is probably one of the most important steps of these five steps uh, that we've had to follow and we're still following right now. Uh, that is investing your time into reading uh, from different authors that have been on successful journeys, financial advisors out there, videos, uh, blogs, podcasts, whatever um, you're looking into. There are a huge number of resources on the internet that would be helpful um, in helping you to get to where you need to be. So for example, we listen a lot to Dave Ramsey. Every morning when I go on walks with my daughter, I'm listening to a podcast of Dave Ramsey and he has a talk uh, radio show. So he um, gives a lot of good financial advice to regular people like you and I. And so we listen. I listen to that every day and there's so many tips um, from Dave Ramsey that I learn that I know that I have to apply to be able to change um, my spending habits in order to build up our wealth even more. You know, we also have local people, people who are here in Fiji who have been so successful um, financially and have built up their wealth over the years. And so whether it be an uncle of yours or whether it be someone in your village or whether it be someone in your church community, whoever it is, yeah. you know, just, you know, don't be hesitant to ask them to sit down and just pick at their brains, you know, yeah. learn from them because they, they've done it here in Fiji as well. And so that's one thing we had to do is we talked to um, quite a few local people who are quote unquote like very successful financially. So the last step is step number five, which is to find extra ways of making income. And this could be a side business, maybe an online business, or if you're like Israeli and is, you know, he's a musician, um, he, had a, he was working a full-time job and doing musical gigs as well. Um, and so all that extra stream of income is so helpful because it will help you to, and it helped us definitely to save even more. When more money comes in, it means that we can save more. So this has basically led us to uh, the step where I was talking about earlier about financial independence. All of these steps that we have talked about have led us to save over $60,000 for the past two years. And what it has really done is it has given us a peace of mind emotionally and mentally uh, to be able to know that if there are emergencies in the future or if there is something that needs to be paid, we have the finances to be able to provide for our family. And I think when you have something like that, it's, um, it's really beneficial to have uh, as a family so that you're not worried about how things are going to be paid or how things are going to be covered. Israel and I have been together since 2016, so it's been four years. We've been married for the last year and a half. And when we first got engaged, we decided that we had to save aggressively and build up our wealth so that we could give our children a better future. Um, also, before we met, I was so bad at saving, you know, and um, Dave Ramsey, he says something along the lines of, it doesn't matter how much you make, it matters how much you keep and how much, um, how much you keep and also what you do with the money that you make. Um, when I was on my first year contract in Japan, I was making a lot of good money, but I had no savings whatsoever by the end of that contract. And that was, um, you know, a big eye opener for me to realize that, you know, it, doesn't, it really doesn't matter how much you make. So you could literally be starting from zero. It's just a matter of building those habits and adjusting that lifestyle to, um, to build that wealth so that you can have a better future for your children. So thank you guys for watching our video. Thank you for uh, tuning in and hopefully the steps that we shared with you about the way that we've been able to save $60,000 in two years will be able to help you know, other young Pacific Islanders like ourselves uh, to build up their wealth. And it doesn't matter where you start, you know, it doesn't matter how much you make. It's just basically start decide, making that decision and starting today. Right, so these are principles that we live by. Um, it's, it's not, like she was saying, it's not actually how much you make, it's, it's the principles that you live by to be able to get to where you need to get to. So thank you so much for joining us and uh, we will be making some more videos in the near future and uh, we hope to see you there.